Hi everyone, this is Dylan with DB Services, and today we're going to be talking about integrating Dropbox with your FileMaker solution. In this video, we're going to quickly touch on setting up your Dropbox app, uh, authenticating with FileMaker, uploading files, and downloading files. So, the first thing that we're going to have to do is make sure that we have a Dropbox account and that we're logged into said account. So, in my case, I've got an account already. I'm just going to quickly sign in. And once we're in, you're just going to see your standard, your standard Dropbox uh, menu where you've got your ability to upload, create folders, and uh, more. Uh, so once we make sure we have that account, we are going to go to dropbox.com front slash developers front slash apps, which will bring us to this menu. Uh, if you're not signed in, you're going to have to sign in. And... The, what we're going to do from here is select this Create App button. And from here, we're going to be setting our different options for the initial setup of our Dropbox application. So, scoped access. And then here is where we can decide a little bit based on our needs. Uh, the type of access that we have, we can do either App Folder, which is going to let us target one specific folder in Dropbox. So if you're in the long run planning to just use that one folder, you can select this. Or, uh, this is what I would prefer, full Dropbox, where you can access all of your files and folders. Um, that way, in the event you need multiple folders in the future, you are able to do so and not have to redo the whole thing. And then you will need a unique name for your application. Once you have all of these selected and filled in, you'll hit this Create App button in the corner. I'm not going to be doing so as I have my app created already. So I'm just going to return to the app console, select my app. And the menu you'll end up on after you hit that create app is this, where we have settings, permissions, branding, and analytics. First thing that we're going to need to do is in settings, we're going to need to take note of two things, our app key and our app secret. You're going to want to store these somewhere secure so you can reference them when it's time to put them in the file maker and hold on to them. The second thing we need to do is set up a redirect URI. This is just where after authenticating, Dropbox will throw your authentication window to. In our case, we're using DB Services' website. Uh, you can use any valid URL. You can use DB Services, you can use your own company's website, anything, as long as it's publicly available. So once we have all of these, we have to set up our various scopes that our app is allowed to use in the Permissions tab. So you're able to access things such as the account information uh, you're using with Dropbox, the files and folders stored for Dropbox, as well as sharing and managing file requests. For our purposes, we're just going to be working with being able to read and write file metadata, read and write file content, the ability to view and manage share settings, and the ability to view and manage Dropbox file requests. So once we have all of those set up, we're going to hit the Submit button down here, which will commit all of these changes, and then we're ready to go with actually, get, with actually setting this up in FileMaker. So here we have a demo file for the basics of the Dropbox integration. This is included as a free download with the article that this video is attached to. And so when you load in, you're going to end up on this screen here, where you can enter in all of your various settings for authenticating. We have our application key, our application secret, and our redirect URI. Make sure you enter all of those in, and then we can get to actually authenticating in Dropbox. We're going to select this Authenticate window, and what it's going to do is pull up a web viewer that connects using the application key to your Dropbox application. And from here, we can sign in with either Google, Apple, or a standalone Dropbox account. In my case, I'm going to be continuing with Google, selecting all of this. And what this is going to do is generate an access token, which is what's going to be used for all of our API requests from here, as well as a refresh token, which will be used to update that access token once it's expired.
Uh, we also have the ability to refresh those tokens down here. I'm not going to go ahead and select it right now. All it's going to do is reset this access token and the timestamp it'll have to refresh at. And let's move on to uploading a document. So here we have a menu that consists of just the file name, which will pull from the document container once we've added one, the path in Dropbox, and the Dropbox share URL. Those will appear once we've actually done the upload. And I'll explain more about the share URL momentarily. So what I'm going to do is quickly just drag in a file into our document. And when I select this upload button here, it is going to push the document to Dropbox and then fetch that share URL, which we use to access the file from Dropbox. Uh, we can use that in FileMaker and that is why we have this open button here. So this open button is going to make use of the share URL to open up the file in Dropbox where you can work with it with downloading, saving as, selecting where else you could open it if you have any connected apps, uh, editing the file, and all of your other settings you can work with in Dropbox, as well as the ability to share via other methods. So, having just quickly touched on that, we're going to move to downloading our Dropbox documents. So, just because this document is currently here, you might not see that it's necessary to pull it from Dropbox, but generally, you are going to be clearing out that container field after you upload to save space in your FileMaker, on your FileMaker server in your solution. Make sure that we don't bloat it with a bunch of documents. And so what happens when we click the download is it uses the Dropbox path that we have stored here. In this case, it is in a folder called DB example, uh, and it is the file here. And if we go ahead and go back, we'll see now that we have that DB example folder and the file present. And when we select that download, it is going to take that file that is at that path and download it to your desktop. Uh, in this demo file, we've also got it set to automatically open it in your pr preview application or whatever you may be using, depending on your OS. And there are additional functionalities that we're not covering in this article. You can delete the document from Dropbox. You are able to perform a variety of other functions but we didn't want to get too deep into it here. Uh, so just as a quick summary, uh, with the Dropbox API, you're able to manage uh, your files in Dropbox with a variety of methods, uploading, downloading, uh, copying, deleting, and in the long run, it is something that could save a lot of time and space with your FileMaker solution and that is all we have today. If you have any questions about implementing Dropbox with your FileMaker solution, feel free to reach out to us at DB Services and we'll be glad to help. Thank you. Have a nice day.